Why is it that the Gemini launches look nothing like any of the other launches we're used to seeing? That's what we're talking about today on Vintage Space. This is actually a really good viewer question that I got. With the Redstone rockets that launch the suborbital Mercury missions, the Atlas rockets that put Mercury missions into orbit, and the Saturn 1B and Saturn 5 that took astronauts all the way to the moon, we're used to seeing these rockets launching on a pillar of fire. The Gemini Titan launches on an apparently clear flame. It all comes down to the different kinds of fuel used. Rockets need, pretty much like any fire, a fuel to burn, an oxidizer to get that reaction happening, and a flame to start the ignition. For the Redstone, this was a mixture of ethyl alcohol and liquid oxygen. For the Atlas, it was a mixture of kerosene, or rocket propellant, and liquid oxygen. The Saturn 1B and the Saturn 5 used the same mixture of kerosene, or rocket propellant 1, and liquid oxygen in their first stages. These are all traditional cryogenic propellants. Because the gases would take up so much volume if they were stored in their gaseous form, they're cooled and then condensed into a liquid form, stored in tanks, at which point they are able to burn cleanly within the rocket engine's combustion chamber. The Titan missile, on the other hand, used hypergals. Hypergals don't need an ignition source, they burn on contact. In the case of the Titan II, the fuel was Aerozine 50, a 50-50 mixture of unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine and hydrazine, and the oxidizer was dinitrogen tetroxide, a mixture of nitrogen tetroxide and nitric oxide. The hypergals burn cleanly. You don't see the flame as the rocket leaves the launch pad. You just see the exhaust, that hot gas issuing from the bottom of the rocket. As for why the Titan II used hypergals as opposed to cryogenic fuel and oxidizer, it comes down to the Titan II's need to be stored in a missile silo because it was, after all, an ICBM before it was a launch system for manned spaceflight. I've got more on that story going up shortly on Vintage Space over at Popular Science, so check out the link below if you'd like to know a little bit more about the story of the Titan II. So does that answer your guys' questions on why the Gemini launches look so different from all the other Apollo Air launches? If not, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to clarify it a little bit more. Because like I said in this video right here where I explain why the Titan II launched with a traditional whoop sound, I'm not actually a rocket scientist. And of course, leave me your other questions and ideas for future episodes in the comment section below as well. Be sure to follow me on Twitter as AST Vintage Space for Vintage Space content every single day of the week. And with new episodes going up every Friday, be sure to subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.